Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Wrath of the Righteous with me, Bring It On. Let's go save the redeemed knights. O oh Lord Baphomet, smite those pitiful freaks. Baphomet, poor old Baphomet, do you really hear us? Then I beg you, stop making these good people hurt others. Baphomet, hear our words. May no harm to you or these good people. Enough of war. Let us pray together for peace. Are they praying for Baphomet's salvation? Have they gone insane? Or, or have I been the insane one all this time? Oh, and right into combat. Into the fray. All right, let's get our haste up. <laughs> okay. Lunch time. Let's down our mortal flesh. Oh, hello. With a carefree smile, Ember waves at the demons. I remember you. We met in the Purple City. She looks at one of the demons, a frail looking creature whose horns have been broken off. How are your wounds? All healed up? It's that lunatic from Aleutian Ira. Remember that crazy mortal who preached to us? Gets her alright. You know what? Go ahead and slit my throat. Eat me. Do whatever. But I'm not going to kill her. Come and join our side. Let us put an end to this war together. That's right. Demons, mortals, we can all be friends. The warrior's face reflects her inner struggle. With a deep breath, she finds enough strength to smile at the monsters. That's true. Reject evil, and we'll accept you as our friends. Look at me. I'm a succubus, but I've managed to save myself from the corruption of the abyss. You can do it too. She's right, you know. What's the point of all this never-ending slaughter? Keep fighting the whole world if you want, but I'm done. Screw this invasion, screw the world wound, and screw Baphomet twice over. Are you crazy? I'm gonna make you wish you never said that. Go on then, kill me. Life in the abyss is no life at all. The girl was right. Better to live five minutes among mortals than return there with you, scum. Peace with mortals. Down with Baphomet. Friends. Thank you. We won't let anyone hurt you. Thank you, little preacher, for opening our eyes. The demon turns to his former allies and bares his teeth. Well, who wants to be the first to attack the demon crusader? Our victory is certain. All right, uh, let's get back here and take care of these guys. Be gone. Quick save. I'm assuming there's going to be more fighting, so we didn't fight the Vivakia that was over here. A stop. The elf's sonorous voice echoes over the battlefield. All present, Crusaders, Templars, even demons, lower their weapons and turn to her in surprise. Listen to me. I was born the year this war began. I knew nothing about it, but my father told me that good people were going on a crusade to save the world from demons. So we went too. Then my father died, but it wasn't demons who killed him. He was killed by some good knights who thought we were cultists. Stupid, right? Ember laughs, but tears roll down her cheeks. Since then, I've watched for many years good people die stupidly in this stupid war. They die from disease, from hunger, from weapons. They kill each other because demons order them to, or out of suspicion, or out of fear. Meanwhile, demons keep coming here from the abyss, and what do they get? A scrap of a wasteland, and then a quick death at the end of a crusader's sword. The world wound has brought no good to anyone. Not the crusaders, not the cultists, not the demons. So let's close it, all together, and finally end this war. Now listen to this mortal fool. Bring me her head. We don't have to fight, demon. Repent, and come to our side. Don't be ridiculous. Come on. Does anyone need me to repeat my orders? I'll devour the soul of anyone who dares raise a weapon against me. And I'll start with the traitors. I will no longer serve you. Curse you and your Baphomet. Down with Baphomet. Down with the Templars. We die today. 
We die as crusaders. I'll devour your bodies and souls. And I'll start with this little piece of fluff. With a baleful glare at Ember, the demon raises his hands, and a ball of ghostly flame starts to form between them. Nocticula. The paws off her, you scaly filth. Emerging out of nowhere, Nocticula moves a finger, and the demon starts writhing in pain. He glances around the battlefield with interest. So, what do we have here? The preaching of a barefoot little beggar stops a battle, makes sinners repent, and turns demons to the side of good. Not very interesting. I confess, girl, your words fail to impress me in Illusionara, but your deeds, they are intriguing. The demon lord glances at the redeemed demons. Hey, you rebels, what does this mean? Do you fear this tiny mortal than, more than Baphomet, Viscari, and all the other demons of the abyss who will be displeased by your betrayal? No, Lady in Shadow. The voice of the demon is quiet but firm. We're not afraid of her or them. We're no longer afraid of anything. We've been afraid our entire lives, but this mortal girl has healed our fear. Heal us if you want, but we no longer follow anyone's orders. The demon frowns, expecting a punishment that never comes. Nauticula looks at you thoughtfully. It's not often I come across things I do not understand. Would you be so kind as explain what this girl thinks she's doing? She already explained everything to you. Remember what she said to you the last time you met. I recall a great deal of crying and sniffling, with some incoherent rambling between the sobs. What exactly was that supposed to explain to me? You there, child. What is all this supposed to mean? How do you make these hardened scoundrels, these blasphemer blasphemers, <laughs> and murderers with blood dripping from their hands repent? What makes even demons who scar scarcely crawled out of the abyss take your side? The Redeemer Queen. Hello. Thank you for protecting me. Ember smiles and waves at Nocticula, who recoils. Why are you asking? You already know the answer. You're just afraid to accept it. Don't be afraid. What nonsense. First, don't you dare call me by that idiotic nickname. Second, I'm afraid of nothing. Third, please do not think of me as your personal bodyguard from now on. The only reason I didn't allow him to burn you was because I wanted to understand what's going on here. Interrogating a pile of ashes would be a trifle inconvenient. You don't seriously think your sickly sweet whining would make me relinquish my demon lord throne, do you? You already know the answer, Redeemer Queen. I see you are not the same as you were in the Purple City. You've changed. In the name of all that is unholy, the demoness rolls her eyes. What was I thinking? What kind of answers could I expect from this feeble-minded creature? Anocticula, why did you come here? I asked myself the same question. I think I wanted to understand why hardened murderers and bloodthirsty demons suddenly started eating out of this insane beggar's hand. What's the use in trying to understand the ravings of a lunatic? The only reward for my curiosity was a headache. How did you know what was going on here? I have eyes everywhere. I keep a close watch on you and your gang. I knew it. You sent your friends to look after me and keep me from harm. I had a feeling they were protecting me. Protect you? Who you think you are, you mortal idiot? If you want, go ahead and jump off this cliff head first. I won't lift a finger to save you. But you've already saved me. Just now. For the first and the last time in your short, meaningless life. So that's your new title, the Redeemer Queen. The next person who calls me that risks becoming acquainted with my collection of torture implements. Well, since you're already here, perhaps you could help us with the battle. As if. Do your own fighting. With a contemptuous snort, Nauticula disappears. Ember happily claps her hands. Good queen. She pretends not to understand, but she understands everything. Her laughter is interrupted by the growl of the demon, who has finally recovered. Looks like everyone's brains have already been melted. Doesn't matter. I alone am strong enough to devour you all. Glory to Baphomet. Death to mortals. Wear it. You 
should have listened to reason. Let's try this way. Mind over muscle. <laughs> okay. And I think that's it. Oh, nope. There's one back here. Oh, good job, Nenio. <laughs> oh, wait. There we go. It all worked out so strangely. We've killed many people. We've saved many people. These knights came here to kill each other, but instead, they became friends. Musing, Ember stares at the battlefield. Everyone is praising me, but I know I did nothing special. I just reminded them of something they already knew. And those demons! Back in the Purple City, they laughed at my words, but I saw they were listening. I believed they would one day remember my words and understand them. And it happened. If humans can stop being evil, so can demons. Even demon lords, like the Redeemer Queen. The Redeemer Queen? Do you think Nauticula is now on the path of good? Of course. She is very proud. She'd never say it out loud. But I see that she has changed. You know, I pray to the demon lords every day and ask them to come to their senses. Ascari and Baphomet don't listen to me, but she... She's different. I know she hears everything. Maybe one day, not soon, but one day, she will get out of the abyss. What will happen to the Redeemed Brotherhood next? Their numbers will increase. They will be joined by new people who have mended their ways. Good people who still think they have been abandoned and have no choice but to be evil. They'll help each other get out of the abyss. And they'll defeat those who have chosen to stay there. The redeemed knights want me to go with them, to teach and guide them. But I'll stay where I'm needed most, with you. These good knights think they need me, but they managed even when they believed I was dead. My words have shown them the right path, and that's good. Now they can save each other and themselves without me. The elf smiles at you. Please explain this to me. How did you manage to get an entire squad of cultists to repent? They weren't really cultists. They were good people who just got confused and started to think they were cultists. I just reminded them who they really are. Well, another battle is behind us. It's time to prepare for the ones ahead. Wait, what do you think? About me? About these knights? About everything that's happened? Your father would be so proud of you. My father. He was good. You would have been friends if he hadn't died. So many people I've loved have died. You're not going to die, are you? The girl smiles warmly. Well, not now that I've rejected my power. You've always been there for me. When I was scared and when I was doubtful, you supported me. If it weren't for you, I'd probably be long dead. Thank you. Oh, sweet. And I leveled up. So this is a really important level up for us because we get... Greater power attack. At 15th level, when using power attack with a two-handed melee weapon, the bonus damage from the power attack is doubled, plus 100% of incre instead of increased by half, plus 50%. Typically you get a 1.5 times multiplier, now we get a times two multiplier. We're gonna do so much damage. All right, and athletics, of course. And here, oh boy.
I could just keep boosting my saving throws. I don't see us moving away from medium armor anytime soon. I'm pretty sure all the cavalier specific armor is medium armor since there are I think one cavalier class that can't wear heavy armor. Uh, Die Hard might be worth it as well. It's a much worse version of Last Stand. And we lost Last Stand since we lost our Mythic levels. A Hammer the Gap might be okay since we don't have anything else to grab. It's not great for my build, but you know what? Yeah, let's grab it. There's some potential there. Really? He didn't have anything unique? Disappointing. I feel like at this point of the game, all unique, uniquely oh, named ahead. enemies should drop something unique. All right, I know we've cleared out this area before, but I'm going to clear it out again just to be safe. Plus, our perception skill is higher than way. it was last time we were here. back to Dresden, rest up, grab Regil, we'll go to his companion quest at the Hell Knight Outpost. Follow my lead. Alright, well I don't see anything. I think we're safe to leave. I do really like the Hedge Knights, but we do have the Paladins in the army instead right now. Oh wait, we can have the Hedge Knights? Okay. Let's try and get this army down here with the other one. and the Hell Knights, and the other reinforcements that I have on the way as well. Marksmen, Champions, and Paladins. Oh, go back this way, thank you. Oh, that's right, because they're out of movement. Ah, uh, almost there. We'll grab them, uh, the Hedge Knights, and we'll continue down this way uh, to the west and start clearing out all this stuff. But first, back to Dresden. As it should be. And I finally remembered to install that new DLC. We should have something waiting for us in our chest. Sovereign Dragon. Known for their wisdom, 
Majestic Sovereign Dragons really leave their homeland of Tianjia. However, this little dragon seems to have quite a bit of thirst for adventure. It's a tiny pet Sovereign Dragon. Sovereign Dragon's great wisdom provides a plus 4 morale bonus on Knowledge World, Knowledge Arcana, Lore Nature, and Lore Religion checks. That is perfect for Nenio. I never use this anyway. She should be using it. I don't want to get rid of that. She needs a slot for scrolls, so I think we'll keep quicken on her. Maybe give him bolster. I really need to start using the rods. I mean, I should be this entire time. I mean, we're not struggling without them, but they would help out a great deal. Oh, we can't afford anything. Not even a hearty meal? <laughs> okay. Daren, I can't understand why blood makes some mortals better than others. What do a person's origins have to do with their worth? Some people's ancestors simply had sharper elbows and better luck than others. And they codified a system whereby they and their descendants would rule over everyone else. Not that I'm complaining, of course. Alright, let's grab Regil and... Oh no, hold on, that let's check the decrees far. first. And then we'll grab Regil and get out of dodge. My principles of drake training. An eccentric crusader knight has secretly hatched a rift drake from an egg and is trying to train the vicious creature. The drake has already killed several servants, but it is beginning to obey some of the commands issued to it. The noble is asking for permission to obtain a few more drakes. Um, yeah, we'll permit the request. Rift Drakes are capricious and full of malice, but their might is undeniable. Perhaps the knight's experiments are not so absurd as they might seem at first glance. What do we get from this? Oh sweet, so the general can summon Rift Drakes. In the fate of the voracious jumble, the major examined the fragments of the revived flesh captured from the demons came to the conclusion that they were working pieces for a certain artifact. These fragments of flesh were meant to grow together and form a weapon created by dark, unnatural magic. The mage can try to complete the creation of this terrible item, but he needs the commander to decide what shape this item should take. And a club or a flail? I mean, I guess the flail. Alright, next up is... The Attractive Impulse. Uh, we'll upgrade an outpost of Ashen, yeah, because we need a teleportation circle more to the west. For convenience sake. I'll go ahead. I was like, we're missing some people, because uh, some people have... Well, some people are no longer with us. That's right. Where is it at? There it is.
Arkham back here. How big can... Her army is maxed out. Well, I guess we can keep all the demons together. How about that? Alright, and I'm assuming the best way to get to these guys is right here? Or maybe right here? Because yeah, there's a chasm in the way here, so I think this is where we need to go. Luckily for us, Reg was one of our better equipped... Oh wait, speaking of. One of our better equipped... B party companions. And so if push comes to shove, we shouldn't fare too poorly in combat. Put him there and rest. You're not a fighter, you're a gardener. I suppose you're a decent enough healer, but you have the soul of a civilian. What are you doing in this war? What you say is true, and praise Shailen for it. You could say I'm just here to protect my garden from vermin. All right, let's go pick some more fights. They're not doing a ton of damage. Which means we have plenty of time to just keep holding the line and let my marksman and general take care of the remaining gargoyles. Fact, we can probably do this. Probably should have done that. <laughs> This unit is still pretty, pretty strong. for the crusade. While the captured demons beg for mercy, they give away extremely valuable information, revealing all the secrets and tricks of the enemy. The officers memorize every word, and in the coming battles, they have a chance to test the new knowledge and practice. So we get like a bunch of experience? Alright, so we get Finger of Death, Heal, Firestorm, Power times power plus five. E ten. So firestorm is better. We'll grab that. I guess if I go up this way, we're gonna loop around. Perfect. Cool. We can try out firestorm.
<laughs> My field test is a success. <laughs> Malicious mages used to live here. All kinds of outcasts, practitioners of forbidden magic, and scoundrels who knew uh, no fear of gods were eager to sacrifice their souls in exchange for arcane power. Now they're all dead, and with utmost care, the soldiers examine their trophies, magic labs, storages of artifacts, and occult libraries. All right, let's continue our journey. This is a level nine army ahead. Quick save. Just blitzing right into the enemy territory. <laughs> it's a little expensive in energy costs. I don't even see how much. Yeah, it costs 40. 100% worth it, though. Alright, so these guys have to go next. have way too many numbers. Sweet gravy. All the land around is strewn with shards of magic crystals. They're brought here in huge quantities. The demon worshipping spellcasters could draw power from them and summon elementals to serve them. They had no time to finish the last ritual, so a portion of the magic crystals fell into the crusader's hands. Alright, so while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and use replenish on my general to get some of his power back. Uh, that army also looks a little scary, so we'll probably do this one first. We'll hold off on the level 11 armies for right now. One of the prisoners informs the soldiers that the captured fortress was called the Castle of Desires. A cunning Glabrizu tempter turned all the mortals that lived here into the slaves in exchange for granting their deepest wishes. Of course, all his promises turn out to be lies and illusions. But we have a new fort. Alright, another demon army. Looks pretty straightforward. I have a lot of numbers though. We'll play it a little safe. I think a firestorm, yep, reaches all of them. It's an absurd spell. I think this is worth doing, just so they focus on one at a time instead of coming over here. The cultists have the channel negative energy AoE effect, and if a unit like this gets to my front line, it's gonna kill everybody. <laughs> I don't want that.
not doing a ton of damage now. I'm not going to waste any more energy because we are burning through it very quickly. That's after having just use replenish on my general. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, it's a little concerned. Again, these big numbers are a little, a little frightening. Having wiped out the cultists, the Crusaders discover many Blood Street golden idols. The soldiers fire up the camp forge and toss them into the flames. The heat of the forge melts the blasphemous statues down as the fighters cheer and whistle. That's a level 12 army. So I think going down here is b the best option. I'm going to avoid these double digits for now. There's an army on the way up here, but I think this army should be able to take care of that. Also, she leveled up. The Weakening Trap looks a penalty to attack for two rounds. Explosive Trap. Fire damage to the activating unit. Okay. Ice Bomb, cold damage to the target, inflicts minus one penalty to speed for one round. She gets a guaranteed cure wounds, that's really good. And stone throw. Physical damage to the target unit. So, power times power plus 5, d8. Times 2d10. So I think this is probably the best option. I don't really care if they reach my front line or not. Excuse me. So I think we'll do Explosive Trap. Oh, she leveled up a couple times. Uh, Master Maneuver 3. There's really no other... Well, we'll look at what else they can do. So Defensive Training. All units in the army have a plus 2 bonus to armor class per level of this feat. Offensive Training. All units in the army have a plus 2 bonus to damage per level of this feat. Master Maneuver. Increases the maximum size of the army by 1 unit per level of this feat. And Intimidation. Enemy units have a minus 15 penalty to combat morale per level of this feat. Um, just want a bigger army. That's You can never go wrong with a bigger army. Go for the numbers, I think. Oh wait, she leveled up again. Uh, so we have Bane, Bless, Penetrating Strike. We've seen all these before. I think Bless is probably the best option. And we get Pit Trap as a guaranteed ability. Here's a trap that immediately ends the turn of a passing unit, except flying units. This ability is a trap. In the name. I should level it up again, jeez. Uh, marksmanship 1. Our range units of the army have a plus 2 bonus to damage per level this feat. A siege mastery. The general uses abilities with the siege descriptor as if he has a plus 3 bonus to power per level this feat. Trap mastery 1. Same description as siege mastery, but for traps. And since we just picked a trap... And we got Pit Trap. So we got Pit Trap and we have um, Explosive Trap. So, yeah. And she leveled up again. Okay. Inspiration 1. All units of the army have a plus 15 bonus to combat morale per level of this feat. Spellcraft 1. Uh, the general has a plus 4 bonus to uh, power per level of this feat. I assume affects the traps, right? Gets to power, and the damage on this is affected by power. Okay. And then extensive infirmary one. Infirmary size increases by 5% per level of this feat. We have hospitals out the wazoo. I don't think we need that. Uh, spellcraft one. Alright, and that's it. Let's hope we get another master maneuver so we can just put the rocks over here. Alright, so yeah, she can intercept this army, I think, and take care of it no problem. Uh, she's a level 6 army as well. Let's 
go ahead and send her up there and hope for the best. And you are going to head down this way. All right. I'm going to call the episode here. And the next one, we will deal with Regil's companion quest and proceed from there. I guess that, probably more crusading, and I don't know what to do next. Because everything else is beyond where we've been before. I kind of want to do Darren's quest, so I think we'll try to map out a way down here. Then we'll teleport back to Dresden, grab Darren, and then come back to it. We also have these uh, optional areas up here, so maybe we'll do these first, just to get them knocked out. Oh, we have this quest too. So yeah, maybe after Regil's quest, we'll do this one, since it's up here by itself. And that'll prevent us from having to come up here again. Where did this army come from? I don't see any forts over here. Maybe there's some that I can't see on the map. Well, I can see these. I don't know. By the way, I'm going to call it here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.